directory is the backbone of most enterprise environments, controlling anything from user authentication all the way to accessing resources. But here's the thing. A lot of these environments are left wide open to attackers for them to exploit. So on today's episode, we're going to discuss these common misconfigurations, how attackers take advantage of this, and ways we can secure our environment. Welcome to Learn with Hack the Bots, a unique YouTube series focused on fast tracking your career in either offensive or defensive cybersecurity. First off, let's talk about the Kerberos pre authentication. So, this is a security system that's set in place to where it actually proves, makes the user prove who they are before they receive an authentication ticket. Now, this gets disabled all the time. <laughs> this happens whether it's by accident or it's used for compatibility in an environment with legacy systems or things that just aren't compatible with it. Now, here's where the trouble starts. When pre-authentication is disabled, an attacker can simply just request one of these authentication tickets for the user's account and the domain controller will simply just serve it up. <laughs> now, what's, what's kind of messed up here is that while these tickets are encrypted, they're encrypted with the user's password hash. And if the password is weak in nature, the attacker can simply take it offline with almost no effort they can go through and crack these passwords and then without visiting the domain again can come back into the environment and then just log in there's there's no alerts no warnings um no sort of failed login attempts it's just that easy now how can you stop this it's actually quite simple all you have to do is just go into active directory and verify that all user accounts do have this pre-authentication enabled you can actually check this by going into powershell and simply just checking on that user's uh, fields and verifying that that field is actually enabled now if you're looking for any sort of practice on this you can actually go a couple different directions if you go to the Hack the Box Academy side, you can look at the red team side of the house and try the Kerberos Attacks module. It's very comprehensive in nature and actually very visual. It helped me out a lot. Uh, on the other side of the coin, you can go to the Hack the Box Labs where you can dig into the new tracks where they have a detecting Active Directory attacks, um, like a like playlist. And with that one, it actually has a bunch of different uh, Sherlock's that allow you to, to see and detect these types of attacks in a kind of like a real world environment. Next, we have unconstrained delegation. Now, this has to be one of the more dangerous uh, misconfigurations you can have in your environment because essentially what happens in a nutshell is a service is acting on behalf of a user. But when it's configured incorrectly, it's actually the worst case scenario because this can act and impersonate as any user to include domain admins. Worst case scenario, if an attacker can compromise a machine that has unconstrained delegation, <laughs> it's like the keys to the castle. You can basically gain access to these authentication tickets, and then you can actually take a step further and have domain admin privileges. We can issue out uh, new users, you know, maintain persistence, what have you. It's actually just an absolute terrible scenario. By simply checking that accounts and machines have that unconstrained delegation disabled, and then going through and verifying what needs to be properly enabled, you're gonna be able to prevent these services from having too many privileges in your environment. Check the description down below for more information that kind of elaborates on these topics. All right, and last up we have um, Link Local Multicast Name Resolution, or LLMNR, and NetBIOS Name Service, or NBTNS uh, Poisoning. These two protocols are designed to help resolve host names when DNS fails. The issue is that they're both out of date, they're typically unnecessary environments, and they're easily exploitable. But here's how it essentially works. Let's say a user mistypes a server name and tries to access a shared folder. Instead of just failing, their machine broadcasts a request asking if anyone on the network knows the name. An attacker running a tool like Responder can intercept that request and pretend to be the correct system and trick the user into sending their hash credentials. If those password hashes are week, just like the ASREP misconfiguration before, attackers can take these offline and then crack them through their machines. Even if they're strong hashes, they could then relay those in an attack and then gain access in other places in your environment. But some good news is that this is a simple fix. We can just disable both these protocols and then it's not an issue whatsoever. If they don't need them, we can get rid of them. Use PowerShell to turn off LLMNR and then dig into your actual network settings, see if you can disable that NBTTS. Once done, attackers won't be able to exploit the environment and gain access to these credentials. If you're actually looking for more information or even some practice, you can dig into the description down below where you can find Active Directory enumeration attacks in the Academy modules, as well as the Noxious Sherlock's uh, in the labs, uh, all in the description. 
we covered some of the biggest Active Directory misconfigurations. Let's talk about how we can proactively prevent this kind of stuff from happening in your environment. Here are some of the best practices every environment should follow. Use group policies to implement security settings. Don't let the individual or admin be responsible for these things. Uh, try to remove that burden and help them out at a grand scale. Enforce strong authentication practices. So things like multi-factor authentication, strong password policies, and even these old legacy authentication systems, just disabling those makes it a lot harder for attackers to get into your network. Regularly audit these privileged accounts. So you don't wanna have some loose domain admins just floating around in your environment. Make sure everything is locked down tight. Implement strong monitoring and detection systems. You wanna utilize your SIM to do this analysis on these event logs and make sure that your EDR solutions are properly mitigating any of these activities. We'll be as strict as possible in our environment and try to make sure our network is safe from these attackers. Using SIM tools to detect odd authentication requests and ticketing activity, we wanna use the Windows event log system and keep an eye on these particular ones. Event ID 4768 and 4769, these are Kerberos ticket requests. We wanna watch for unusual patterns. Event ID 4624 and 4625 for logon success and failure. We wanna keep an eye on this to spot brute force attempts and event ID 7045. This is for new service installed, and this is to catch persistence mechanisms. Leveraging our EDR solutions allows us to detect and act on things at the host level. We don't wanna wait till it becomes a huge problem. We're able to nip it in the bud right away. Implementing tiered administration. We don't wanna be doing day-to-day -day activities with our admin accounts. We wanna save that for those privileged you know, activities. And lastly, enabling host-based firewalls and network segmentation. We wanna prevent any opportunity for lateral movement or any easy kills in the network, just keeping it nice and compartmentalized for easy remediation. Active Directory misconfigurations are by far the easiest way for hackers to get into your environment, but it doesn't have to be. By simply implementing some of these security measures and settings, it makes it a lot harder for them to get into your organization. Remember, cybersecurity isn't just about reacting to things, it's about being proactive in nature. By simply doing regular auditing, making sure your authentication measures are in place, and just keeping an eye on your environment, it's gonna allow you to keep your AD space a lot cleaner. Now, if you're looking to build out your own environment to detect these kinds of threats, you're gonna watch this video right here where we discuss the importance of designing a SOC. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and consider checking out Hack the Box's new certified Active Directory pen testing expert, the new top offering at Hack the Box. Thank you very much and have a good one.